Hello everyone, the focus of our discussion for now is the respiratory system. Here you will see the structures of the respiratory system or the respiratory tract. Remember that without oxygen, cells will eventually die. And the respiratory system is actually the one which provides this oxygen to the body. Another purpose of the respiratory system is disposal of carbon dioxide, which in turn helps regulate blood pH. This function is made possible through gas exchange, oxygen, and carbon dioxide occurring in the lungs, specifically the cells ng lungs, which we call the alveoli. Now, together with the cardiovascular system, the cardiovascular and the respiratory system share the responsibility for supplying the body with oxygen and disposing carbon dioxide. Your respiratory system siya yung nag oversee ng gas exchanges and that occurs between the blood and the external environment. So here we see the organs. In cephalocaudal order, we have the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, trachea, bronchi, and the smaller branches, and the lungs, which contain the alveoli. Now, please take a look also at the diaphragm in the photo, just below the lungs. The diaphragm is a structure which actually divides the respiratory organs and the digestive organs. But at the same time, itong diaphragm na ito, it assists in breathing. Dome shape siya, it contracts and flattens whenever we inhale, and it relaxes whenever we exhale. Now, because um, gas exchange with the blood happens only in the alveoli, yung other respiratory organs na na-mention natin kanina are actually just conducting passageway which carry air to and from the lungs. Yung passageway from the nose to the larynx, yan yung upper respiratory tract. While yung trachea, down the alveoli, yan naman ang lower respiratory tract. These conducting passageways also purify air, humidify air, and warm air. Thus, yung air na nakakarating ng lungs, it now has fewer irritants than the air outside. The first structure is the nose. Air enters the nose through the nostrils or the nares. Yung inferior or the interior of the nose contains the nasal cavity. We have the right and the left nostrils divided by the midline nasal septum. The olfactory receptors for the sense of smell is in the superior part of the nasal cavity. And we have actually discussed that in the special senses. Now, in the nose, meron siya ang rich network of veins, which one of the most important functions of the nose is to warm the air habang pumapasok siya sa respiratory tract. Meron din siyang sticky mucus. It moistens air and traps bacteria and other foreign debris. That's why sometimes meron tayong mga dirt sa nose, especially uh, filtering this uh, air that enters our airway. The cilia, it's a fine down hair, dyan sa may posterior or uh, upper part ng ating nose. It creates gentle current movement of mucus. Please take note that that hair, which we call cilia, is not really the ones filtering or hindi yan yung mismong buhok na nakikita natin doon sa um, outermost nasal cavity. But cilia is actually there at the posterior part, and that is basically for air movement, especially movement ng mucus. Concave are the turbinates. Ito yung three mucosa-covered projections or lobes, which increase surface area mucosa in air turbulence. And lastly, yung nasal cavity, it's separated from the oral cavity by a partition called palate 
in Tagalog, Malangala. We have the hard palate in the anterior part and the soft palate in the posterior part. If you move your tongue and touch the upper part of your oral cavity, you will feel the hard and the soft palate anterior and posterior. Now, when we talk about nose, its most important function, of course, is air entry and exit. But we know very well that the mouth can also act as an uh, entry and exit of air. Pero what are the advantages and the disadvantages? First, the mouth is a larger route for air entry especially when you need more oxygen. For example, after running, pagkatapos tumakbo ng isang tao, mapapansin nyo pag humihinga siya, nakabukas ang bibig, which means mas kailangan niya ng oxygen. And also, we can use the mouth, especially uh, if the nose or there is nasal congestion. But when talking about the best route for air entry, of course, that is always the nose. Why? The nose can warm air kasi may rich network of veins. The warm, the nose also humidifies air. Nandyan yung conca or concave because oxygen is dry air. Naturally, when you inhale oxygen as a dry air, Kung hindi siya na humidify ng conca or conca, baka ma-irritate yung airway kasi dry air siya. So, namamoisen ang air na pumapasok sa airway because of these structures in the nose. And lastly, ang nose may filter. Nandiyan ang mucus na pwedeng mag-filter ng air na pumapasok sa nose. So, still... The best route for air entry is the nose. Sinuses are open areas of the skull. Paranasal sinuses, they lighten the skull, they act as resonance chambers for speech, and they also produce mucus. Meron tayo frontal sinus, sphenoid sinus, ethmoid sinus, and maxillary sinus. Usually, nagkakaroon ng infection or what we call sinusitis dahil meron ngang diretsyong pathway itong mga sinuses na ito down the nasal cavity. That's why sometimes it becomes infected. But usually, the site is the frontal sinus and they usually develop in the late childhood age. Now, kapag na-infect yun, because they produce mucus, syempre, para ding merong ubo at sipon yung patient na may sinusitis. The signs and symptoms are the same almost with that of acute nasopharyngitis or the common cold. But the difference is, whenever we palpate the sinuses of this person, at kapag tender or masakit ang sinuses niya upon palpation, that could be sinusitis. Nasal lacrimal ducts, which drain the tears from the eyes, also empty into the nasal cavity. Nasal lacrimal ducts, no, down the nose, they carry tears from the right and left lacrimal gland. Ang lacrimal gland, nandun siya sa upper outer cantus of each eye. And uh, whenever there is extreme emotions or merong mga injury to the eye or irritants to the eye, pwede magsecrete ng tears ang lacrimal glands. And nag empty ito doon nga sa nasolacrimal duct na may connection din sa nasal cavity. That's why when we are crying, sometimes it's as if meron din tayong uh, colds. Pero yung consistency ng lumalabas sa eyes natin is just watery. Pero yung sa nose, mas thicker consistency because in the nose meron tayong thicker nasal mucus. And uh, again, I've mentioned sinusitis a while ago. Yung rhinitis naman is inflammation of the nasal cavity. 
and the uh, yung cleft lip and cleft palate these are actually um, congenital disorders pinanganak yung bata na may bingot no cleft lip hindi na form yung lip cleft palate hindi na form yung palate during embryonic life another structure is the pharynx the pharynx is a muscular passageway about 13 centimeters and this serves as passageway for food and air, commonly called the throat. There are three areas, the nasopharynx, the oropharynx, and the laryngopharynx. The nasopharynx from the nasal cavity is for entry of air. The oropharynx, which is directly uh, after the mouth is an entry for air, food, and fluid. While the laryngopharynx, malapit niya sa entrance ng larynx, air lang ang dapat na dumiretso dyan. Pharyngotympanic tubes, which drain the middle ear, open into the nasopharynx, or sometimes tinatawag na eustachian tube. So may connection yan from the pharynx up to the ears. If you recall, again, the special senses. That is why maaring magkaroon ng otitis media kung ang patient merong sore throat or inflammation ng pharynx or pharyngitis. Also, tonsils are clusters of lymphatic tissues. If you remember, malt mucosa-associated lymphatic tissues which serve in immune response at pag na-infect, ito yung tinatawag na tonsillitis. There are several tonsils. The pharyngeal tonsils or the adenoid are on the sides of the pharynx. The palatine tonsils in the oropharynx and the lingual tonsils at the base of the thumb. Mostly, Ang common site ay palatine tonsils and the uh, removal of it is tonsillectomy indicated kapag paulit-ulit ang tonsillitis or nagkaroon na ng air obstruction. But ideally, because tonsillitis is usually an infection, natitreat siya with antibacterials or antibiotics. Next is the larynx. This routes air and food into proper channels. We have three cartilages, the epiglottis cartilage, the thyroid cartilage, and the cricoid cartilage. Yung epiglottis ang tinatawag nating guardian of the airways. Why? Because whenever we swallow, food and fluid will now enter the esophagus instead of larynx kasi nagsasarado ang epiglottis. So again, kapag tayo'y lumulunok, automatic, sarado yung epiglottis. And yung structure, just very near that, yung natitirang nakabukas ay ang esophagus. So lahat ng nilulunok natin na food and water sa epiglottis de derecho. The thyroid cartilage now is uh, the area, nandiyan yung Adam's apple. No? And lastly, yung cricoid cartilage is just above the trachea. Now, if anything other than air enters the larynx, usually, trigger ang ating cough reflex para ma-prevent yung substance from continuing into the lungs. Uh, and be because this protective reflex does not work when we are unconscious, Never try to give foods or fluids to an unconscious person, especially when attempting to revive him or her. Uh, you just try to palpate your larynx. How do you do that? You place your hand midway on the anterior surface of your neck. And then, swallow. Pagkalunok mo, mararamdaman mo yung larynx nagra-rise. Now, Part also of the laryngeal mucous membranes is a pair of cord. Ito yung tinatawag na true vocal cord and nagva-vibrate yan especially with expelled air. 
it plays a role in speech. Kaya tinatawag din siya minsan na voice box. Kaya pag na-infect ang larynx, which we call laryngitis, usually, ito naman, no, pareho lang rin yung mga sintomas mo ng pharyngitis. Minsan, similar also with acute nasopharyngitis, pero sa laryngitis, talagang makikita mo na minamalat na siya. Halos nawawala na siya ng boses kasi affected mismo ang voice box. Next is the trachea. It's also called the windpipe. It's fairly a rigid wall reinforced with hyaline cartilages. It's lined with cilia that beats opposite direction to that of incoming air to propel mucus. Kaya importante ang cilia dito sa coughing reflex, lalo na kapag maraming secretions sa lower airway. But, smoking inhibits the ciliary activity. Kaya minsan, yung mga chronic cigarette smokers, madalas meron na silang mga ubo at hindi nila ito ma-expel ng maayos. The air entering the trachea or the windpipe from the larynx, no, it travels down its length. Usually, 10 to 12 centimeters ang haba ng trachea or about 4 inches hanggang level ng 5th thoracic vertebra, which is approximately middle of the chest. Now here, in cases of increased oxygen needs, Due to, for example, yung upper airway may inability na to deliver oxygen down the respiratory tract o kaya may respiratory distress, hindi makahinga, maaring gawan ng intervention ng isang patient. Letter A, either perform intubation or letter B, tracheostomy. When you say intubation, intubate, may pinapasok ka na tubo from the mouth down the trachea. At yung tubong yun ay tinatawag na endotracheal tube. From the word endo, no? Sa mouth, hanggang trachea. So, ang dulo ay nasa trachea. That tube will serve now as the artificial airway. Para makapagpasok ng endotracheal tube sa isang tao na nangangailangan ng intubation, we need an instrument. That is the laryngoscope. The laryngoscope will help visualize the larynx. Para sigurado na sa larynx maipapaso yung ET tube or sa larynx maiinsert ang ET tube and not in the esophagus. The other is tracheostomy. Sa tracheostomy, talagang bubutasin yung area, no, uh, upper part, uh, just below the thyroid cartilage within the cricoid cartilage. So, bubutasin siya artificially para doon magkaroon ng access for air. Next is the main bronchi. We have the right and the left main bronchi and it's formed by the division of the trachea. Each main bronchus runs obliquely before it plunges into the medial depression or the high loom of the lungs. Now, yung right main bronchus is wider and shorter as shown in the photo. The left main bronchus is narrower, longer, and not straight. Consequently, dahil dito sa anatomical differences na ito, the right main bronchus is more common site for an inhaled foreign object to become lodged or aspiration. Kaya madalas pag may mga nalulunok na aspirate foreign object, mas madalas sa right side of the lungs. Next, the lungs. It's a fairly large organ. Large size, but it only weighs 2.5 pounds. Soft and spongy. The lungs occupy the entire thoracic cavity. Except, of course, for the most central area, no? Yung mediastinum, which usually houses the heart, the great blood vessels, the bronchi, the esophagus, and other organs. Kaya makikita natin sa photo, may cardiac notch. 
there are two lungs, the right and the left lung, divided by the mediastinum or the space between them. Apex is the narrow superior portion and base is the broad portion. In contrast to the heart, baliktad, because the heart, apex of the heart is inferior and base of the heart is superior. The left lung has two lobes, while the right lung has three lobes. The lungs are covered with pleural membranes. There are two types, the pulmonary or visceral pleura, ito mismo yung surface ng bawat lung. Si parietal pleura naman, siya yung wall ng thoracic cavity. Now, the pleural membranes produce a pleural fluid. It's a slippery serosecretion which allows lungs to glide easily over the thorax wall, especially during breathing or movement. So, ang pleural fluid ay dapat nasa pleural space. At importante yon so that there is no friction, maayos ang movement ng lungs whenever nag inhale and exhale siya. Now, pleurisy is what we call inflammation of the pleura. Pneumothorax is when air leaks into the chest wall. Nakakarating ng plural space yung air. E dapat ang nasa plural space yung plural fluid. Plural effusion naman, there is excess fluid in the plural space. The bronchioles are the smallest of the conducting passageway. The network formed is called the bronchial or the respiratory tree. The bronchial tree from the primary bronchi or main bronchi, meron tayong secondary bronchi, meron tayong tertiary bronchi, up to the smallest, yung bronchiole. Again, paliit siya ng paliit. All but the smallest branches have reinforcing cartilage in their walls. Here now, we have the terminal bronchioles, which leads into the respiratory zone structures. They are even smaller conduits that eventually terminate sa alveoli or air sacs. A respiratory zone structure, ito ang respiratory bronchioles. In the photo, you can see the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, and the alveoli, the actual cells of the lungs. Remember that this respiratory zone is the only site of gas exchange. Lahat ng structures na na-mention natin earlier, these are only sites for passageway of air. Now, what is this respiratory membrane? It consists of alveolar and capillary walls, fused basement membranes, and occasional elastic fibers. Look at the photo. Gas is flowing on one side and blood is flowing on the other side. This photo depicts the pulmonary circulation. So remember, may blood vessel jaan. Yung pulmonary artery, no? Ang lumalabas dyan na dugo, on unoxygenated blood, dinadala ng pulmonary artery yung unoxygenated blood sa lungs. At ito na si lungs. The alveoli is where gas exchange occurs, particularly in the membrane between the alveoli and the blood vessel. Anong klaseng blood vessel kaya yan? Blood vessels are artery, arteriole, capillary, venule, and vein. So, si pulmonary artery, being an artery, yung anoxyblood na dumadaan dyan, dere-derecho hanggang makarating ng arteriole, hanggang makarating ng capillary. So, imagine, yung nakakonect mismo na blood vessel sa alveoli are capillaries. And again, di ba, ang capillaries, nandiyan yung site ng exchanges, microcirculation. So, ang daladala na an oxy blood na may carbon dioxide will now get out of the capillary level 
the alveoli now which carries oxygen kasi nag-inhale ka will bring in the oxygen doon din padaan through the capillary level nagkaroon ng exchange and what happens now kapag na pasok na yung oxygen back to the capillary level oxygenated blood na siya so aandar ulit yung dugo from the capillary or babalik ng venule dadaan ng pulmonary veins babalik ulit sa heart so this is now the pulmonary circulation so if you will really look at it where exactly is the exchange happening sa gitna ng alveoli and capillary. So the actual exact gas exchange happens in the alveolo capillary membrane. And the uh, alveolar macrophages are also there. And uh, again, when you say macrophages, it's a line of defense, no? which is in the alveoli. Take note also that in the alveoli, meron dyang surfactant. Surfactant covers the surface of an alveoli. And it's actually a lipid or a fat molecule. It coats the alveoli and very important to decrease alveolar surface tension, especially during expiration. Because imagine if you inhale, Lumalaki ang alveoli na parang lobo. But whenever we exhale, hindi siya dapat totally mag-deflate. Dahil ang alveoli, pag totally nag-deflate, when we exhale, that's equivalent to lung collapse or atelectasis. Kaya pag nag-e-exhale tayo, dapat nananatiling meron pa air na naiiwan sa alveoli. And that happens because may surfactant na nagko-coat. That's very important, again, to prevent decreasing alveolar surface tension during exhale, which prevents atelectasis. So, yung mga tao na may respiratory distress, no, minsan kailangan nila ng mga help ng machine para hindi magkaroon ng total deflation ng alveoli ng lungs. In summary, this is respiration. And the, again, the major function of the respiratory system is to supply the body with oxygen and to dispose of carbon dioxide. To do this, at least four distinct events collectively called respiration must occur. So, babalikan natin ngayon ang pinag-aralan natin sa cardiovascular system. Because here, respiration is a general term. Respiration is not merely happening in the lungs. So, ano ba ang respiration? First step is pulmonary ventilation. This is simply called breathing. Air moving in and air moving out of the lungs. That's the first step. It's the act of inhale and exhale. Next is external respiration, gas exchange between the body and blood exteriorly. So when we talk about external rep respiration, ito yung nangyayari sa pulmonic circulation. Yung anoxy blood nagiging oxy blood at the lung level. Third is respiratory gas transport. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported to and from the lungs and to and from the tissues via blood. So, yung to and from the lungs, yung sa pulmonic circulation. Yung to and from the tissue cells, yung systemic circulation. So, ito yung lahat ng nagaganap when blood travels in both circulation. And lastly, internal respiration. Ito naman yung gas exchange at systemic capillaries occurring between blood and cells inside the body. So ito naman, gas exchange sa pagitan ng lahat ng cells ng katawan sa system. This is what happens in systemic circulation. So in general, Combine what we learned in the cardiovascular system and what we learned here. 
yung simple breathing is just a part of respiration. But respiration in general involves external, internal, and even the gas transport. Let's see now how volume changes uh, relate to the two phases of breathing. So ito yung inspiration, when air is flowing into the lungs, and expiration, when air is leaving the lungs. So inhale, intrapulmonary volume increases. Siyempre, napupuno ng gas yung lungs. And it spread out to fill the larger spaces in the alveoli. Expiration, there is intrapleural pressure or volume within the lungs. Pero dapat negative ito. Ibig sabihin, kahit nag-exhale ka, hindi mo lahat ine-exhale yung in-inhale mo. Sabi ko nga kanina, hindi dapat totally mag-deflate ang lungs when we exhale. Otherwise, magkakaroon ng lung collapse or atelectasis. Isa sa tumutulong dito yung surfactant. Many situations other than breathing also help move air in and out of the lungs. And this may also modify the normal respiratory rhythm. Coughing, sneezing, crying, laughing, hiccups, and yawning. These are some examples of non-respiratory air movements. Next, we also need to measure respiratory volumes and capacities. Gaano kagaling mag-carry ng air ang aking lungs. Usually, minimeasure ito kapag may mga conditions that would require really interventions in assessing how well the lungs can carry these volumes. Tidal volume is 500 ml. Ibig sabihin, amount of air moving in and out of the lungs. Isang cycle ng inhale and exhale. Inspiratory reserve volume is 2,100 to 3,200 ml or at least 2 to 3 liters amount of air that can be taken in forcibly over tidal volume. Hinga po ng malalim. So, yung deep inhale, kaya palang magpasok ng lungs ko ng at least 2 to 3 liters of air. Yung ERV is the opposite of IRV which is expiratory reserve volume. Ibig sabihin, yung todo naman ang exhale mo. But look at how much is ERV. Only 1,200 ml. It's the amount of air that can forcibly exhaled, can be forcibly exhaled over the tidal volume. So, bakit kaya ganun kakonte ang ERV? Samantalang ang IRV, madami. Again, go back, that exhaling should involve negative pressure dahil hindi lahat ng na-inhale mo dapat mong ilabas para manatiling okay ang lungs during exhalation at hindi magkaroon ng lung collapse. Residual volume, ito yung natitira. Alright? That's why if you add ERV plus residual volume, nasa dalawang litro which is actually your IRV. Alright? Residual volume will maintain the capacity of air in the lungs so that there will be no lung collapse. Vital capacity is the total amount of exchangeable air. So ito nga yung um, IRV, ERV, even the residual volume. Yung dead space volume naman, air, remaining in the conducting zone passageway. So nandun lang siya sa mga conducting tract other than the alveoli, and they never reach the alveoli, but it's only in a few amount. How do we measure this respiratory volumes and capacities? Meron tayong kailangang gamitin na machine. This is the spirometry. And uh, usually, no, the respiratory capacities may measure with this machine called a spirometer. As a person breathes, the volumes of air exhaled can be read on an indicator which shows the changes in air volume inside the apparatus. 
spirometer testing is very useful for evaluating losses in respiratory functioning. And again, doon nga sa mga respiratory diseases. How do we now assess the chest and the lungs? Please take note of this technique, IPPA. It's an acronym. IPPA is in sequence. So first to do is inspect using the eyes. May titignan ka. Next thing is to palpate using your hands. May kakapain ka. Third step is percuss using the hands. May pupukpukin ka. And letter D, fourth step, is to auscultate. May pakikinggan ka, usually using a stethoscope. So, IPPA. First is to inspect the chest and the lungs. IE ratio refers to the ratio of inspiration to expiration. Normally, ang IE ratio is 1 is to 2. Because expiratory time is about twice as long as the inspiratory time. Now, itong ratio na to typically nagbabago yan sa mga asthmatic due to prolonged expiration. Usually, meron silang IE ratio of 1 is to 3 or 1 is to 4. Minsan naman nagbabaliktad. Inverse ratio, nagkakaroon ng IE ratio na 2 is to 1 or even higher. Sila naman yung mga nangangailangan ng ventilation, ng machine, no? kasi non-compliant yung lungs nila. Another thing that you will inspect is the use of accessory muscles. So, dapat normally hindi gumagamit ng accessory muscles for breathing, which means may labored breathing or nahihirapang huminga. Pag sinabi accessory muscles, we can check the sternocleidomastoid, the scalenus, and the trapezius muscle. And lastly, dapat walang retractions at walang grunting. Your retractions, it's something that you see. You can see in the two photos below, nagre-retract yung chest. May chest in drawing. Pag nag-inhale at exhale, nakikita mo na may pumapasok sa loob ng parang mga buto, kitang-kita mo yung hirap paghinga. I, we added grunting here, although grunting uh, is something that we hear. No? Yung grunting, may grunting kasi minsan na naririnig natin even with a naked ear. Ibig sabihin, hirap na hirap ng huminga yung client. Normally, breathing is silent. Pero pag nag-grunting, naririnig mo yung paghinga niya even with a naked ear. Pero minsan, may naririnig tayo na grunting with stethoscope. And again, retractions and grunting, these are actually late signs of respiratory distress. Ibig sabihin, nahihirapan na talagang huminga yung client. Retractions, you see chest in drawing. Yung grunting naman, you hear that there is already difficulty of breathing. Another to inspect is the APL ratio. The size of the anteroposterior and the lateral ratio, yung haba niya. And normally, 1 is to 2. Ito yung diameter from front to back, yun yung anteroposterior, yung lateral naman, yung transverse diameter. In the photo, you will see that the APL ratio is 1 is to 2, yun yung normal adult chest. Pero, you have to check. Minsan, barrel chested. So, para na siyang uh, square. Yung pigeon chested, no? we call it uh, pectus carinatum. And yung funnel chested, yung pectus excavatum. Usually, ang mga barrel chested, sila yung mga chronic obstructive pulmonary disease like emphysema. Sa pectus carinatum, nakikita mo parang nakaprotrude yung chest. Yun namang funnel chested, nakapasok papaloob. Again, dapat wala ding scoliosis. 
kyphosis and lordosis, although this is a test for the spinal cord as again na discussed natin before sa nervous system. Another to is inspect of course is the respiratory rate or the RR. Yuk niya is regular RR. Normally, 12 to 24 breaths per minute. Dapat walang this niya. This niya is any difficulty of breathing. Takip niya is a fast breathing, more than 24. And bradip niya is slow breathing, less than 12. Dapat din regular ang rhythm. Tuloy-tuloy, hindi umihinto. Pag nagkaroon ng paghinto ng breathing, you call that apnea or cessation of breathing. And then, dapat pag inspect mo din yung chest and lungs, walang lesions, walang sugat. Next is palpation. Pag sinabing palpation, kakapain mo. So, kapain mo all over the chest, anterior and posterior, dapat walang masakit. Now, remember, tenderness is assessed once you palpate. So, pag sinabi niya na aray, aray, masakit, so that's an area of tenderness. Dapat wala rin masses, walang bukol upon palpation. Now, dapat din natin chinecheck ang symmetrical chest expansion and tactile fremitus. In the photo, we can see chest expansion. So, how do we do it? First, place both of your hands in position 1 as shown in the photo. Yung tip dapat no right and left thumb touching each other. So, dapat pantay ang paghawak doon sa posterior chest niya. Next, with hands in place, sabihin sa pasyente, inhale. Pag nag-inhale ang pasyente, automatic susunod yung kamay ng nurse. Observe that both your thumbs will separate in symmetrical directions as seen in position 2. And then, kita mo dapat pantay. Lastly, mag -e exhale ulit yung patient. Pag nag-exhale yung patient, babalik yung kamay mo dapat sa position 1. If chest expansion is symmetrical and normal, yung dalawang thumb mo, they will touch each other again and be back to original position. Kapag minsan, pag bumalik siya dun sa position 1 pero yung isang thumb nakababa or yung isang thumb nasa taas na, baka may chest lag no? or problems doon sa lungs nung affected na lung field. So, dapat ang normal findings, symmetrical chest expansion. Another test that we do when we do the palpation is tactile fremitus. Ang tactile fremitus naman, please take note of three areas in the lungs. So, posterior chest din ito. Bronchal area, right and left side of the lung, yaan. Bronchovesicular area, yung area na yan ng right and left lung. And lastly, vesicular area. So, first... Place both hands in position 1 ulit over the bronchial area. Sabihin mo sa patient, banggitin niyo po, 99. So, pag nagsalita yung pasyente habang naka-position 1 ka, feel for vibration. For sure, mararamdaman ng kamay mo yung vibration habang nagsasalita siya ng 99. Sometimes, uh, pwedeng 3-3, no? but usually 99. Second, place now both of your hands in position 2, nasa bandang bronco-vesicular area. Tapos ganun ulit, sabihin nyo po, 99. Feel the vibration, mararamdaman mo, mas mahina na siya compared dun sa naramdaman mo sa position 1. And lastly, place both hands in position 3, nasa vesicular area ka na. Again, sabihin nyo po, 99. So, pag sinabi nyo yung 99, again, feel for vibration. And, mas mahina ulit. Minsan nga, halos wala ka nang maramdaman pag, 
dun ka na sa position 3. So, what are the findings from position 1 to position 3? Normally, yung vibration nagde-decrease. Pero, all throughout the positions, dapat both of your hands feel symmetrical vibration. So, nung nasa position 1 ka, medyo malakas ang vibration, pero dapat pantay yung right and left. Nung nasa position 2 ka, mas humina, pero dapat din pantay yung right and left. And lastly, position 3, halos wala ka ng maramdaman, pero dapat pantay ulit yung right and left. So, both hands should feel symmetrical vibrations, meaning on the right and the left lung fields in all three positions. But the vibration decreases down from the bronchial to the vesicular area. Next is percussion. Normally, um, percussion is heard as resonant. Ito ay isang sound na loud, low pitch, hollow sound of long duration. Percussion penetrates to a depth of approximately 5 to 7 centimeters. Ginagamit to in order to determine relative amounts of air, liquid, or solid material in the underlying lung. Hindi dapat timpanitik, dapat Resonant timpanitic is usually heard when we percuss the abdomen. So, paano mag-percuss? As seen in the photo, yung middle finger ng non-dominant hand mo should be parallel to intercoastal spaces of the lungs. When you say intercoastal spaces, kakapain mo yung spaces between the ribs. You can only percuss the spaces. You do not percuss the ribs. So, dapat parallel as seen in the photo. Now, using the middle finger of the other hand, so yung dominant hand mo naman, pupukpukin mo yung middle finger nung non-dominant na nakaparallel sa ICS. Saan mo siya pupukpukin as seen in the photo? You tap no several times the space between the proximal and distal interphalangeal joint. And then when you tap, no, tap repeatedly, maririnig mo yung sound. Normally, ano dapat yun? Resonant. It's a loud, low pitch, hollow sound of long duration. Ano yung mga abnormal percussion notes? If it's hyper-resonant, Increase amounts of air. So, malakas, low pitch, booming sound with long duration. Ano naman yung tunog kapag dull? Baka may fluid doon, may pus, may consolidation, or may tumor. It's a medium, soft intensity with a thud-like sound. And ano naman yung sound ng flat? Merong large amount of fluid over an area with little underlying air, gaya ng plural effusion. So, it's soft, high-pitched sound with a very short duration. So, again, normally, dapat ang sound upon percussion, resonant. Last is auscultation. To auscultate the lungs, to hear it, we need stethoscope. As air flows in and out of the respiratory tree, nagpoproduce to ng two recognizable sounds that can be picked up with stethoscope. No? Yun yung bronchial and vesicular sounds. So, you will see again no, the bronchial area, the bronchovesicular area, yung gitna nila in the vesicular area. So, normally yan yung location kung saan ilalagay ang stethoscope. Now, bronchial area is where we hear bronchial sounds. Air rushing through a large respiratory passageway such as trachea and bronchi. Pero pag vesicular, soft muzzled breeze as air fills now the lower airway which is the alveoli. Ano ngayon yung adventitious lung sounds? These are abnormal lung sounds. Yung number one 
ito ay tunog ng airway na sumikip or obstructed. Stridor, naririnig usually on inspiration. Wheezes, naririnig usually on expiration. Yung number two naman, it's an airway filled with fluid, mucus, or secretions. Ronchi or gurgles, they are over the trachea and bronchi. Loud and low pitch continuous sounds. Best heard on expiration. Pero pwedeng mahear on both. Yung crackles and rolls naman, over the base of the lungs, it's fine and short crackling sound. Best heard naman ito on inspiration but can be heard on both. So if you hear in the stethoscope na parang may masikip na airway, stridor or wheezes. If you hear naman sa stethoscope na parang may tubig, parang may plema sa lungs, parang may mucus, it's either ronchi gurgles or crackles rouse. That's the end of the respiratory system discussion. Thank you very much.